Hey, it's John Reed, JDOD.com. Man, look what I got here. We got a special analyst deconstruction airing out their beefs with <laughs> SAP and each other. It doesn't get any better than this. I got two guys that I, I respect for their concise, sometimes always opinionated, and good views on the market. We got Brian Summer. We got, we got Esteban Kolsky. How you doing? Good. Thank you. We yeah. survived the general strike day pretty well so far. There was a strike? There was. I saw a picture of some guys in riot gear beating up protesters. <laughs> so, but it didn't seem to affect us. <laughs> That's good. Yep. Our cocoon was wonderful. So just for our viewing audience, we have a, a half hour uh, to bat around some issues with these guys. I want to hit on SAP Cloud for sure. These guys have spent a lot of time looking at cloud. Uh, but we're going to start first with just some kind of general views of the conference so far. We're basically through the second day. We have one full day to go. We haven't gotten Vishal Sikha's keynote, but other than that, we've gotten a fair amount of the feedback, though. The loss of Bill McDermott's presence definitely affected SAP, I think, a little bit there. So what are your general reactions so far, either to keynotes or to any conversations you've had in general? Well, I mean, I'll, I'll start. Um, I came here expecting not a lot, mostly because TechEd was not that far behind behind us, and you know, the, 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 there wasn't a lot of uh, buzz and activity behind it. And I, I gotta say that I'm somewhat surprised uh, at the C SAP 360 customer, I don't know what the official marketing name is, I got a whole list of names, but uh, I'm somewhat surprised at it. I mean, I think that they're actually taking it a lot more serious than they used to. I think that uh, there's uh, something there that is not quite fully cooked. And I think that the HANA CRM SAP 360 thing, it's very, very interesting. I see, I've seen a lot of demos, I've seen a lot of uh, uh, you know, decks and had a lot of conversations. I think there's something there, but we're still much further than the January 9th launch date from actually seeing something there. Can I just ask you, if SAP were to execute on the 360, because this is brand new, a lot of people don't even really know what it is. Including what, SAP. Right, what would it actually mean to customers so if they do it well? So here's the interesting thing. I had a, this conversation happened twice already, which actually I'm going to give you some credibility. There were two people from SAP from the uh, uh, marketing and from the business side. They both told me that Bill McDermott is now heading SAP strategy uh, for CRM. And this is very interesting because until now, SAP always took the, the, the stance that CRM was something that came later as an add-on. And now they want to make it the, 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 you know, the foundation for a lot of the things. Their fear is like, you know, if they lose CRM, the computers can come and take the ERP business and the financials and all the other business. So now they're actually putting a lot of stock into, into uh, CRM. If they can execute this, and this is a big if, if they can execute within, within the next two years, we're going to have a completely different market. Based on what I saw today, on the demos and the applications that I saw, they could become a very credible, very critical player in the CRM market. Well, let's pick up on that. I, I think there's a defensive aspect to this offering. Uh, you've got, um, you know, Wall Street rewarded uh, Workday a few weeks back with an extraordinarily high valuation coming on the, you know, coming out of their IPO. And I think to some extent, Wall Street's kind of given a um, a raspberry, if you will, to the uh, to some of the established ERP vendors. Now, where the cloud stuff has really caught, uh, you know, made tra uh, good traction and cloud with analytics is making traction is in the HR space, it's moving into the financial space, it's coming in, um, and it's coming in the CRM space. So I think they had to have an answer if bringing like HANA with the CRM and doing it all in the cloud, if only to avoid predation of their customer base and having more of these cloud providers nibbling at the edges of the periphery mm -hmm. of the product suite. And that gives them time to like solidify the install base and hang on while they continue to develop some additional cloud offerings. Are you saying this didn't stoke the fires of your imagination, Brian? Is that what you're getting at? Uh, those are your words. <laughs> <laughs> well, but, but you know, he, here's the thing. I mean, uh, and I agree with you in, in, in the, the analysis. We the better part get that on tape. Well, uh, uh, I said with the analysis. I said <laughs> with the analysis. Not with the conclusion, with the analysis. So. <laughs> well, well, that's half of it anyway. It, it's but, a but less <laughs> important half, but it's something. Brian, but, but you're only half pregnant <laughs> on that point. Go ahead. Okay. Well, it is half pregnant. But you know, here's the thing. It's like the applications that I saw today, and I saw actual applications. I mean, you know, I saw some demo applications which are like you know, Flash and all that stuff. But the actual applications that I saw today, they've been in the development for a fairly long time. So while mm. I agree with you that they mm. had to have something, and this may be premature, including the launch day of January 9th or whatever they have, I think that there's a lot of real value that if they can figure out how to put it together, it's going to make a difference. Now, cloud is a critical aspect here because when you look at SAP, uh, CRM, on HANA, or whatever the name is, or 360, whatever, not even one third of the functions are in cloud yet. 
not even one third of them are on demand. And we have a lot of on-premise stuff that is actually being driven there. So cloud is going to be the critical part. I don't think they have answered the cloud, the cloud uh, question yet. But yeah. I think that they're actually putting together a nice, interesting suite that if it moves to the cloud in the next couple of years, that's what I was saying earlier, you know, it could actually have something there. But, but don't you think that part of SAP's challenge here is that they were able to kind of buy their way, way into HCM and procurement, but with CRM they really couldn't. And yeah, CRM on HANA has some potential, but they don't really have a real CRM SaaS offering that you can really get excited about at this point, do they? I mean, isn't that really what they need to be doing right now? I, it, it is, and this is, this is what the mobile apps are actually providing, some exciting user interface that users can get behind. You know, and this is the part that I was saying about the cloud. I mean, the infrastructure behind it is not yet all fully put together. But the interfaces, the mobile apps that they developed in the last year, year or so, they're actually exciting. It's something that, you know, I haven't seen from any other vendor. Salesforce doesn't have it, Oracle doesn't have it. Microsoft is kind of getting there with this Windows 8 thing that they're trying to do. But it's, it's, it's something that it could make it exciting. Well, okay, well, so you want to talk exciting, then I think we have to put this show in contrast to Dreamforce uh, a few weeks back. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and I know I'm, I know I'm going to just goad uh, Esteban on this, but um, here's here's a company with not only a uh, CRM app that's been out in the cloud since shortly after they got started in '99, uh, but I mean they've had a 2009. They, they, had a re they had to retool it once along yeah. the way, but um, but they also have all the other stuff that goes you know that's going in there with the uh, platform and service, and we go on and on with all the other stuff they have. It's a different ecosystem, it's a different world. It's, it's a mm -hmm. very different kind of environment. And uh, so there's a catch-up deal that uh, uh, you know, SAP has to do. You're, you, may, you gave the functionality kind of gap they have to close on this, um, this app. And I think like Salesforce, for example, still has some maturation work they have to do, blowing out the rest of work.com if they're ever really gonna do that. Um, uh, finish out some of the other kinds of advanced analytic capabilities uh, with some of their applications as well. So there's still, there's a lot of room for improvement from a lot of products out there in the okay, marketplace. I agree. But, but I think it's, it's good that we have, again, a healthy, competitive uh, ERP kind of marketplace out there. That there's a lot of stuff going on, there are a lot of moving parts. Now let's go back to your original question, which was, what was the general observation of the yeah. show? Yeah. So to me, it, it's good and frustrating at the same time in that I know, at, you know, the more time I spend at the show, the more time I keep peeling back layers of stuff and I find that there's other stuff going on that's kind of sub rosa at the show. It, it takes a lot more digging and investigative work to figure out all the other kind of cool stuff that's happening. Yeah. And when I leave, I'm probably going to leave thinking, man, there's about 20 other areas I probably didn't get enough detail in. And yet in the keynotes, you get, you get this much of the vision, if you will, coming out. It, it's very, very short-term focused and it's very near-term. And maybe that's the culture of the company to keep, play with the cards a little close to the vest, not overcommit, not overpromise, mm -hmm. whatever. This is a very stark contrast to some of the conferences uh, their competition do in the, in the States, which are all about futures and products that, well, we can name them, but we can't build them yet, uh, but you know, that's, there's a lot well, of that and, and, and that's 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 a great point. But I mean, I, I want to take one of the comments you made, you know, about the healthy ERP market coming back. Because what I see is, like, I see the four major players for the CRM, and for the most part, ERP, with the exception of, of uh, Salesforce. But the four major players for CRM had made a huge turn in the last year, and they had come up with great strategies that are all very different. And I'm starting to see SAP do that in CRM and trying to do that you know, across the board as well. So you know, SAP is, is more focused now in retaining the customers than getting new customers. It's more focused on like, what they need to do. You know, Oracle, well, Oracle is Oracle. I mean, Oracle is saying, I got my customers, you, know, you guys stay out. And well, I'm how, fine. Many, how many CRM products do they, how many more do they need over there at, uh, at Oracle? At Oracle? Well, they have what, 16? So they need about 20 more. <laughs> so yeah. But I mean, it's not how many they have, it's how many work. And that's the key difference here. <laughs> that's all your comment. So, well, <laughs> it, it is, but the thing's like, you know, it, it comes, to me, it, the bottom line in all this, what I'm trying to get to is like, you know, the cloud is a big differentiator going forward mm -hmm. for all these vendors and for all the organizations. The companies are investing, you know, hundreds of millions of dollars in getting the infrastructure up to speed for the cloud, and the vendors are trying to catch up, and they're not there yet. None of, none of the big vendors are there yet, and this is why, you know, the comment you made earlier that I agree with is, you know, they have all these small cloud vendors nibbling at the edges until somebody's going to figure out the way to make it there. And I don't think that SAP, Oracle, Salesforce, or even Microsoft 
have any idea where they're going. And they have all, like you said, all these products to be named later, all these visions and everything, but this, that nobody has the whole product, the whole spectrum ready yet. You know what I was really struck by in the McDermott keynote was uh, at one point he described uh, cloud as the quote unquote pervasive deployment model. And that's a bit of a radical departure for SAP's verbiage around cloud because typically SAP kind of couches cloud talk in kind of a self-congratulatory uh, it's a hybrid feature kind of thing. In other words, like, you know, we're a work in progress in the cloud, but we've got on-premise covered and a lot of companies still want on-premise, right? I thought it was pretty striking that he put that out there, um, which in a sense raises the bar for SAP around cloud. And I wanted to ask you, because they have to live up to that now, right? If they say it's a pervasive deployment model, they have to follow through on that. Well, you know? yeah, but I mean, I mean honestly, John, that, that's, that's probably years late in the coming. Right. I mean, they had, they have, they've had business by design that they've been working on since at least like about 2005, right. and uh, and they, you know, and I know they had to do a retooling on it to change the tenancy aspects of it, right. but still, it was a cloud app right. or product line. Uh, you know, they have to go cloud because that's where the market's moving. Uh, right. There's no no question about that. What I would have appreciated in the show, and I'll, I'm writing a piece on this is that I think there's at least three trajectories. Shameless what? plug, Brian on ZDNet. Look what? for the piece there. Okay, well, I, I didn't <laughs> plug that. You did. I, I, I did the shameless plug for uh, you. Thank you, but yeah. uh, okay, I, I'm not here pimping page. No, I just okay. want people to know how to find your stuff. Okay, thank That's you. That's it, so go on. So, let's see. Uh, <laughs> get distracted the by it. I can't believe you caught, made me at a loss of words. That never yeah. happens, but anyway. Uh, uh, no, the um, Three trajectories. You were just starting. You said the three trajectories. The three the, trajectories, yes. yeah. The SAP, I think SAP could do a better job of giving guidance to its uh, customer base and to its prospects. And in specifically, they should say, you can choose three paths. You can go with an on-premise and you're going to stay on-premise till the cows come home. You can go with a uh, virtual or private cloud kind of world, or you can go multi, a multi-tenant cloud world. And you might even want to think about a transition through there. Now you go like, oh yeah, that, aren't they already saying that? But what they need to give is a guide plan for each of those trajectories. They need right. to say, how are you going to cut cost? Which was one of, uh, which is related to something that Jim Schnabe uh, spoke about. And how are they going to improve value? And they need, you know, so if you're going to be on premise, then they should be giving you like a worksheet of like, well, you need to virtualize these systems. You need to. Uh, use something like Panaya and other things so that you can free up IT su support ma and maintenance resources and redeploy them on using some of the more strategic apps like all the mobile stuff that they're announcing at the show. You could, you know, but each one of those three trajectories has very different kinds of ways of driving value out of the system. And I think right. the guidance these customers need out of that is overdue. But yes. I think, I, I, you know, I agree with the three trajectories that they exist. But I think it's misguided to keep on premise for the long run, for uh, the foreseeable or even I for the never ending future. Well, I, I, on premise should, should disappear. Mark the sooner down. the better. I mean, on premise is, is, is at this point for mobile, that, for mobile deployment, for the world that we live in, that it is going more and more global to but call Esteban, it something. What about the security of my data and the regulations and the privacy? Oh, come on, and your data is more secure in the cloud than it's in your place. I mean, anybody can break into a place and yeah. with, with a thumb drive and take all your data before you even know it. Okay, talking more so perception than reality. I, I agree, but but the thing is, like you know, on-premise is not about security. On-premise is not about integration. On-premise is not about extensibility. On-premise is about people that are, have a misguided view of the world. So I got in a big argument with one of the uh, one of the competitors uh, to the to SAP the other day, and I asked him that exact point: When are you going to lay down a strategy that says you're going to move these customers of yours off the on-premise world to a cloud world? And the guy told me, and I got that quote, he goes, that would be suicide. Yes, but I, I think I know who you're talking about. Yeah. And if I'm right, and it's a red company situated somewhere in California, <laughs> and, and, and I'm not putting words in your mouth, I'm saying if, if that's the case, the, uh, the main reason they're doing this is because I have a $2 million to $60 million machine that I can sell you for on-premise that is going to do everything that you want. The suicide is not for the customer, the suicide is for the vendor. And I told this to this, if, if it is this vendor, I told them the same thing that you told them. This is, you need to get people off on-premise. On-premise has no future in this world. This was great many years ago, but it, it has no future. But in all seriousness, would you really advocate moving manufacturing processes to the cloud at this juncture? I, I would totally do that, absolutely. All right. I mean, it's well, not going to happen overnight. Right. 
but it's something that I will advocate. Like you but, said, but see, setting Brian, the path see, for this is the yeah, most yeah. important part. I, I think this is a really interesting point. Maybe both of you can comment on it because I just want to sharpen your critique of SAP's cloud strategy a little bit because you've gone after SAP from both a product side but also what you might call a messaging or customer guidance side, right? Like yeah. clarity of messaging so customers can understand what their options are. Where do you think SAP's weaknesses are around this? Is it more product or is it more taking that message properly to the customer in a, in a way that they can understand or is it both? Like where do you fall on that? I think the, uh, I'll give kudos to Salesforce for having the cleanest messaging around. When they have a database to sell uh, in the cloud, it's called database.com. When they have a people-based uh, HR product, they call it work.com. And, and you, Wait, get you don't like NetWeaver HANA in the cloud.com? Uh, or <laughs> SAP HANA NetWeaver uh, you know, virtual management machine lifestyle whatever dot com, you know, if it can't go multiple lines on the header, uh, it's just <laughs> not a, an appropriate name. Yeah. Uh, now, but I, I think the uh, to your point, there is a vision story that needs to come out, and the best software companies have a point of view about the future of business and the future of business technology, and they are able to articulate it very well. And, uh, and they're, they're evangelical about it. And what I, what I think is going on is there's a little bit of concern, too much concern about the customers they have versus the customers to come. And that when you, they're playing a little safe. And that's what I was saying earlier. I know, talking to other folks, they've got, they got tons of bright, brilliant people here at SAP and they're working on some amazing stuff, but you don't hear about it that much. Mm -hmm. it's, it's a little harder to ferret that stuff out. Mm -hmm. I, and I'm not so sure why, why they're pulling the punches, if you will. I think they could really put some distance and some mileage out there and show themselves as a great leader. And the other thing I want to go back to, why I said those three channels uh, of three different directions on the vision, it's because I think they need to be coming across as a company that gets it from a customer experience perspective with regard to, we don't care how you deploy stuff and if you move and transition from one method to the next, if you're using some of our new technologies, if you're still the same size company you were before, there's no cost change, no license deal, anything else, because we're an innovation company, not a financially driven company, which is the way some of these other firms operate, who are just mm -hmm. auditing you every other month and right. nailing you with incremental license but, but so, so, so here's the kudos for the company that I just supposedly put down. I think that you know Oracle has had the clearest message from this year, Oracle Open World, not before. This right. year they have had the clearest message for what cloud is, Larry's keynote on Sunday was exceptionally well done, finished ahead of time and with a very good message, and then it got destroyed during the week when everybody else kept talking about it, but it was a very good message. And like the three strategies, like you mentioned, they said it from the beginning, you know, this is what we're doing, there's three strategies, you can do whatever you want, you can deploy any way you want, we'll support you, we have the products, we have end-to-end, -end and et cetera, et cetera. So I mean, I think that they have a really good approach which actually delivers what you were, what you were asking about. The problem that they have, from my perspective, is you know, they don't understand the financial pressures and how to move away from the financial uh, uh, approach that they have. I agree with you 100% there. I think that SAP needs to answer the question of the cloud before they can set the, thre the three path. I don't think they have answered the question. I think they have components here and a little piece there and maybe half a strategy here and, and you know, half a HANA thing over there in the cloud, but they don't have a complete strategy that, they, that, that, that clears all this out. Well, and and that should be... Well, isn't it a risk too when you start acquiring solutions, then you have a tougher time kind of integrating them and explaining a coherent message, right? Because now you have a rebate working into that story and new leadership and how does that yeah. all fit in? And, and it took Oracle three years to figure out how to do it. Yeah. So I mean, I don't expect or, or SAP to get it done now, but I expect SAP to accelerate the acquisitions because they have some you know, pretty big holes to plug in right. and I expect them to take the next two years to, to deliver this message and that's going to be the most critical part from my perspective on where they are. I think that HANA is a, a magnificent piece of technology that has a lot of applications but until they clear the, the issue of where they are in the cloud, they're not going to go too far with it. Right. Uh, just for our viewers, just so you wonder like maybe how long we're going to be prattling on like this and debating these <laughs> points, we're actually 10 minutes from a hard stop. So I, I hope the next 10 minutes are 
are, are scintillating because that's all we got left. Um, Esteban, <laughs> let me. So what was wrong with the last uh, 10? <laughs> okay, no. okay, uh, I think ahead, it's John. great. Yeah, yeah. I, I just think we can e do even better. That's all. Oh. No, um, <laughs> no, but I want to I ask. I think there's a couple of companies left. Yeah, yeah there's a couple we haven't bashed or criticized, right? Um, listen, I wanted to ask you as far as SAP's cloud message or cloud story not being sufficient for you at this time. What, what's missing? What do you need to hear that you're not hearing or what products they need to offer they don't offer? So, so what's missing is, I'm going to go back to what Brian said, there's missing a roadmap for when each product is going to be available in each one of these three uh, you know, presentations, we call it something else. It, there's missing a, a, an, a, an idea that somebody needs to be leading, and I haven't met this person yet, that somebody needs to be leading, what's the SAP strategy for cloud, and how does it integrate with the customer strategy in cloud? I mean, as I said earlier, customers are spending hundreds of millions of dollars creating their cloud infrastructure, and SAP needs to meet them. Somewhere there, somewhere in between, somewhere, you know, halfway there, all the way there, whatever, and nobody knows what that is. It's really hard to sign up with a vendor to be on the cloud if you don't know what they're doing on the cloud. Until they put that message clearly out there, then they're not going to be able to, 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 to make that, that leap. Have I'll you heard, to, have you heard I'll the better that one? Just say that and, you know, I think that's the uh, that's clear to me that's an issue for the customers to come. How can they sign up for that when they don't know what it mm -hmm. is, okay? The customers they have are being, I think the, 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 the gist of it is, is uh, they're feeling like, well, they're making progress and they're working on several different fronts and if I trust SAP, they'll eventually get there. I think that's a dangerous bit of strategy. I think they need to communicate that, uh, what their real cloud strategy is and communicate it quickly because competitors are continuing to innovate at an incredible clip. Now mm -hmm. the, other, the other vulnerability area is that the core guts of the, uh, of the, let's talk about the enterprise suite applications, that was basically designed you know, at the tail end of the industrial age in the late, <laughs> uh, you know, in the 70s, if you will. It's gone through some retooling, you know, over time, but it's still a basic, uh, you know, MRP system. And I don't think that businesses today live in the industrial age. Yep. And I think we have to rethink how you really want to run and build a modern business. And the implication of that is that you would build a software product today very differently than what's there right now. And trying to surround an existing um, core system that's going to stay on premise and surrounding it with cloud apps, that's convenient and low cost, but I'm not sure that's the long, that's the home run that you really want to yeah. hit in this market. I, I completely agree. And this is why, to me, and I go back to something said earlier, to me, Salesforce has done a really good job of retooling the product. But it wasn't that hard because it was only like you know, 10, 12 years old at the time. Or actually it was six or eight years old at the time. It's about 13, 14 years old now. So it was not that much. But I mean, SAP, Oracle, and to a certain extent Microsoft, to name the four largest vendors here, they all need to retool for, for a, you know, a cloud-driven world and they haven't quite done yet. So let me tell you how important this is. Uh, we all know about a concept called dog years. You know, uh, mm -hmm. for every human year, there, a dog lives eight. See, I think there's a difference between the client server development years and the cloud years. And Absolutely. it's maybe eight to one as well. Yep. Workday's on its 18th release now. And in the same time frame, most vendors are lucky uh, to have release. Hmm? 19th release. 19th, okay. 19th comes from Dennis Hallett. So, but my point being that uh, it's the speed with which these things are yep. coming up. The speed with which like Rootstock went from the running on the NetSuite platform to running on the Force.com deal, how fast can Andy's going to be building, where Glovia is at on building on the, on the uh, Force.com architecture. It's the speed, the cloud speed, which is so fast, which is going to be the biggest competitive threat. In, you know, uh, and that's what's really got to get emphasized here. And if you don't have the vision and you don't demonstrate the speed, it's going to leave a lot of questions and a lot of buyers. And, and, and not only do I agree, but here's an interesting stat. I mean, uh, in the client server world, releases, major releases used to be every three years. And then we celebrated when we went to 18 months, like if it was you know, a major accomplishment. Mm -hmm. In the cloud world, we have a release every quarter, if not more often. I have, I have uh, startups that do cloud applications where like, they change the entire applications literally overnight. 
So yeah, there's, they, one, there's one vendor I covered who uh, did 160 uh, releases in one year. Yeah. And I had to go tell them, your customers will tell you to knock that stuff off. I mean, But if it's multi-tain, then nobody knows. Oh. <laughs> you know, one, one thing you guys haven't touched on that we only have a couple minutes to comment on, and I don't know if, it, if we just disagree or if it's something we haven't covered, but to me, the developer story is a really big part of the cloud story because I don't really view cloud and the enterprise going forward is just a collection of discrete, huge monolithic apps that are built by vendors. I see them as apps ecosystems communities where partners mm -hmm. and customers and even individual developers are contributing industry relevant add-ons and products easily that are easily consumed. And to me, that's a really big part of a coherent cloud message and that would be what I'd be looking for from SAP because to me, that's where, see SAP's at a, at a crossroads between HANA as data, database versus HANA as platform in terms of sort of how the emphasis is. And to me, I like the platform story because I like thinking about how SAP could be competitive with taking the analytics and the mobile and the collaboration features, all the different areas they do have expertise in and creating an apps environment where you can build on the cloud using those tools. So to me, that's what I want to hear about. I, am, am I completely on the moon? Um, I'd, um, I think you can't ignore the enormity of like the Android developer market and the iOS market and even the force.com market for the just sheer numbers of developers out there. But I think there's actually another development market uh, out there coming up. And that's a market that's full of a different kind of developer. Someone who's like so attuned to like the social sciences, who understands the psychology of uh, buyers, uh, suppliers, of all kinds of other constituents. Because the new apps that are gonna be built are like mobile apps that touch all kinds of other people that never were the traditional users or constituents of an ERP system. You're not gonna build apps uh, for the most part for somebody working on a production floor. You're gonna be building apps for all kinds of other people and they have a different way of wanting to interface and integrate with applications. Casual users, maybe even customers, you know. Yeah. But, but it goes further than that. An enterprise app store properly developed lets anybody who's connected to build an app in seconds. Just like that, you build whatever you want. Uh, take three data, po data points from here, take two you know, functionalities from there, you have your app, and it works any way you want to. Well, so think, about this, think about this. Um, how long is a cell phone valid in the market? They, they well, kind of, uh, they, they come in and out of fashion or whatever you want to call it in, in three months. Yeah. And are you going to build, a, you know, you, we have to think in terms of like throwaway applications in the Absolutely. market. Because the devices, the formats, the footprints, the resolution, the bandwidth, everything changes so and rapidly there. The, the key is you cannot build that with on-premise. That's why I think that uh, the yeah. whole world needs to go cloud. I mean, we're not that far away. We, we have all the components today. We have the right. technologies there. It's just a question of like getting the vendors lined up and saying like, you know, how are we going to do this and just get an execute and get so it done. Sounds like he's doing the $6 million, man. We have the technology. We can rebuild it. Yeah. So. <laughs> So then the cloud and developer stories, you would agree, are connected in many ways. Yeah, but the thing is the developer, the quality of the developer is changing and the end user is becoming the developer. This is, this is one thing that I, I'm predicting now. We're going to see in two years the brilliant move from Salesforce when they acquired Heroku, which nobody's been able to deliver or seen yet. Right. Because that's, that's the model that we're going towards. It's like small apps developed by the, by the end users. Now, the, the big developers still remain. They're going to need you know, to be on, on the, in the organization or connecting clouds together, but I think that that's, that's a changing model. Okay, guys, we just have two minutes, so it's just uh, 60 seconds for each of you for the closing comment here. Anything about the keynote from Vishal Sikha you want to hear tomorrow or just any final comments you want the viewers to keep in mind? Brian? In a word, strategery. Strategery, <laughs> yes, absolutely. I, I mean, I, I hate to keep pounding on this, but I want to know what they're going to do. I, I, I still, I heard many keynotes during the year from Bishal and from everybody else. I heard many people talk. I still don't know what they're going to do. Strategy will be great. And just, you know, a little picture, something, you know. I'm, I'm up for anything at this point. All right, folks, stay tuned. Uh, we'll get to the bottom of that tomorrow. We will have an, Im an immediate live wrap as soon as we can get our people seated after the Bishal Sikha keynote. So look for that. Uh, thanks for watching today. Now we're off to our next gig. See ya. Thank you.